All right. Hello, people. Welcome back to another video where today we are going to be going over the best way to survive and the best way to prepare for the far reaches of the Dark Sea. Now, let's just get straight into it. The first part we're going to talk about is your build. Now, in terms of your build, you want to have the best build possible to go out to such a dangerous area. You need to get as much damage or as much health as you can on your armor. You need to max out your weapons and get them enchanted. You want to max out your fighting styles and you want to max out your magic all for a chance to fight those Atlanteans and win. Now, the Atlanteans are very, very strong. You can get very high level ones up to even into the hundred thousands. Now, I don't think that they're very viable to kill, but the level 500s, the level 400s, and the level 600s, you can kill them once. So, in terms of your actual build, you want to have either high survivability so that you can at least take a punch from them and then go after them again, or you want a high amount of attack damage so that you can dodge them, make sure not to get hit by their grabs or else you're gonna die, and then you could just absolutely mash them as fast as possible. Now, in terms of your actual abilities, like I said before, you do not want to get grabbed. So the best type of ability is ranged abilities. You keep far back from them and just outrange them. They will either one shot or two shot you. And in terms of your actual warding and your insanity, don't want to be wearing Atlantean armor unless you've got the um, a good amount of warding to counteract your insanity. But you want to be wearing armor that has Virtuous on it to keep you safe from the Insanity effect, which is at stage 5, it will be damage over time, it'll be the blue ghost on your screen, and it'll be the large amount of light and the zoom-ins and all of that weird visual effect. So you don't want to be clouded by them whilst you're fighting an Atlantean to make sure you have a lot of warding either through your armor or your warding potions. So, in terms of the actual Atlanteans themselves, you should avoid fighting the Atlantean boats as much as possible. If you're solo or if you're in a small group, avoid them because there is no point in fighting them. Your team will be totaled and your boat will be wiped. Whereas if you are in a large group or a large team, you could most likely overwhelm them and manage to take down Atlantean brigs or Atlantean fortified brigs out in that area. Those are the most likely ones to spawn. So just be careful because they will deal a lot of damage. But as long as you can overwhelm them or outstrength them, you should be fine. Now, in terms of Siren Islands, Siren Islands are fine as long as you can aim, as long as you can dodge or block or parry, and as long as you have a large amount of regeneration. But once again, if you're solo or you're in a small party, you might be able to win, but it's very unlikely. So it's much preferable to go in with a large party again. So also in terms of looting, you don't have to fight the Atlanteans. Once again, you do not have to fight them. In my last video, I said in layer one, you don't have to fight them. In layer five, you don't have to either. Obviously, unless there is a lot of loot around them, say gold chests and silver chests and lots of dark sealed chests around them, then yeah, go all for it, smash them, get that loot. You don't want to leave it behind. But if there isn't a lot of loot around them, then there is no point going after them. So let's talk about the brig. Now in terms of your brig, you will either want a fast brig for escaping or want a high health brig for survivability. Now an extremely fast brig will allow you to escape, it will allow you to travel between island to island a lot faster because they are few and far between, but they will also allow you to get to the far reaches faster because the far reaches, obviously, it's very far out. It takes a long time to get to them. So if you've got a slow boat, it's going to take even longer. However, if you do have a slow boat, it's most likely going to be armored to the teeth and it's going to have a lot of weapons on it. So in terms of the trade off, you're trading your speed for slowness, but you then you're getting armor instead of low health. So you kind of got to weigh up the two. If, you're got a, if you've got a low party, then it's great. 
if you've got a high amount of people on your boat, then go for speed because they can just whack the boat and keep it health, uh, keep itself up. Now, in terms of potions and different effects that you can have on your person, you will most likely want to farm for golden petals or marble horns and any other different materials that you need before going into the far reaches. Now, this is because you will want warding potions, war breathing potions, luck potions, and most of all, health potions. Because, yeah, you can get enough warding on your gear. You can just not go into the water and survive without war breathing potions and the luck potions. That's just a bonus for after. But health potions, you're gonna need them. Now, you can either go for life blooms, which will give you decent health potions, but it's much preferable to go for the St. Lily's flowers out in the dark sea, which can give you much better, higher quality healing potions. So go on to my last video and have a look at that video where it'll tell you about how to go and farm in the dark sea for dark sea chests because it applies the same to these materials. The St. Lily's flowers, the dark seal chests, the golden petals, the narble horns even, because obviously you can just fish if you want to. You stay safe away from the Atlanteans and you just go out and farm as much as you can whilst avoiding them at all costs. You should be able to be fine, but obviously you need to have higher requirements to go into the further uh, areas of the Dark Sea. And then in terms of other potions, any other potions that you use in combat, go ahead and use. It's not restricted to just them four, but them four are the key ones that you will guarantee to need. Now, just a final few bits. You should bring a lot of cargo with you if you have a small party or if you're solo. I wouldn't recommend going solo, but if you do, take cargo. Make sure you have a bronze hammer and make sure that if you are going out with a speedboat, make sure that all of your crew has a bronze hammer so that you can repair that boat up as fast as possible. And in terms of actually traveling in a group, it is always recommended to travel with a large group when you're going that far into the dark sea. Make sure that they all have warding, make sure that they all have a strong build and make sure that they all are decent at combat and are able to loot. Because if they die out there, they're not coming back. They are not coming back unless you decide to sit in the middle of the Dark Sea layer 4 for about half an hour or more. But that's it from me. Cheers for watching. Get to looting. And I'll see you in the next video where we'll probably be talking about jewel crafting because I'm trying to do that at the moment. So I'm going to go over all the different bits about jewel crafting and what you need to know about it. So stay in tune for that one. Make sure to like and subscribe and keep the notifications on so that you can see my streams that I do later on at night. So I'll see you then in a bit.